Hi, this is Mark Howard, and in this podcast, I get to interview the one and only Lily Livolsi of MyDentalWig.com, an amazing woman, and you're going to enjoy this podcast immensely. Uh, recorded last week over Skype, I do apologize for some of the sound quality on it, but you will get the gist of it. This woman is taken her business to a level that is unprecedented. She tells you why social media has been important to her business. She gives you a sneak insight into why she does certain things in the business. And you're going to find out how you can copy what she does and get into the US of A. From self-confessed Uber driver through to city girl ambassador, this is one podcast you definitely want to listen to. So welcome to this episode of the Business Machine uh, podcast and today I'm interviewing probably, well not probably, I am interviewing one of the most amazing women I've ever come across, Lydia Livolsley, I hope I've got that right. Let me just introduce you first before you start, before we get into it, let me introduce you because I think why people, the people listening to my podcast need to get this, you're an entrepreneur, you're a founder and CEO of Dental Week, which we're going to talk about in a minute, in a minute dentalweek.com, you're an inventor. Uh, you're an EB5 investor, you're a City Gala ambassador, and on top of all of that, you also run the HNW City Summit, which we're also going to talk about. Lydia, where do you find the time? Are you Superwoman or something? Because you know, how do you manage your time around all these things? So, uh, hi, Howard, and really thank you so much for having me here today. So, I'm Lydia Laborsi. I'm the founder and CEO at MyDentalWake.com which is a Los Angeles-based uh, dental business where we offer opportunity to foreign investors, let's say uh, high and high net worth investors, the possibility to come to the America, to the United States with their spouse, the unmarried children under 21, and get the U.S. green card. And I, in fact, I created this EB-5 uh, offer based on my own experience where I moved from Paris to uh, Los Angeles as a French investor. So my background is about making teeth. So basically I can make crowns, bridges, implants, dentures, orthodontics. I can make all types of uh, dental devices. And this is what brought me here in the United States. Wow. And like I said, you do so much at the moment. How do you manage your time? I just need to know this. Have you got like really good time management skills? How do you do it? Well, we, we all have 24 hours, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. That life, even sometimes we feel that um, life is not fair. However, we all have 24 hours. It's about how you manage your life. And the way you manage your life reflects on how you live. So I just do my best to be more productive with my time. That's the bottom line. And I'm a mother, so we know how to juggle the times and take care of the family, take care of kids, and run the business. That's it. Uh, absolutely. I mean, there's so many female entrepreneurs throughout the world these days, and it's one of the things that I always said, that women are starting to lead the way in business, and not just the way that businesses are run, and not just the ideas, but the, the concepts as well. You guys are very, very good at this, and, that, and I'll just put it out to yourself, but I'll put it out to a lot of women around the world, and it's... Um, for me, it's refreshing, especially because I, I see a lot of young women starting businesses nowadays, and they and they see the struggles, and they they think, they think it's very much a male orientated world, but it's changing, and it's changing. It's people like you that's helping it to change. You see, and that's what I love about it. Now you, we spoke very quickly about the EB5. How how can people get involved in this? I mean, it's, the, the, a lot of people are after the magic green card. You know, there's this like this magic green card. How do investors get involved? What what do they need to do? You know, what is very, uh, the fantastic part of the EB-5 is that the U.S. gave the opportunity to high net worth individuals to come to the United States. And basically, those high net worth individuals in their countries are already uh, multi-millionaires because 
uh, the amount which is required to apply for the EB-5 right now in 2020 is $1,800,000 USD. Uh, so yeah. you have to be entrepreneur already in your country and the U.S. is giving the opportunity to come and grow your business, to come and have access to the U.S. Uh, uh, customers, which is uh, uh, over 300 million uh, customers. And the way it's work, and also get uh, involved with living the American dream, because at the end yeah. of the day, the American dream, you live it here in America, not somewhere else, no matter how wherever you are in your country, you are not living the American dream. And for some investors, they really want that to happen. And also for their legacy, for their children, they want to have their descendants here in the United States. Can you imagine we have the first lady, our current first lady, she's not from here, America, she came from uh, Europe and today she's the first lady. So it's, it's just to explain how important it is, this EB-5. So what I did, when I moved from Paris to here, I had my lawyer and my CPA. And I found that if it's not enough. And I just realized that there were a gap, a little niche here. There were nothing for uh, people like me dreaming, having that goal, that dr uh, dream to live the right. American dream. There were nothing yeah. out there. And this is where my entrepreneurial skills uh, just pop up in my mind. I said, you know what? I need to create it. And it's not easy because you, you need to make sure that your company, I need it to make sure that my company meets the requirement of the USCIS. Because this is crucial. And I'm not in the real estate at all. So I need it because I came in a business model which has nothing to do with the real estate, I was able to set up my company really based on those criteria. So I, and I, I just use all the tools, all the tech tools out there to make sure that, make things very easy where the foreign investors just go on my website, my Dental Week, my business website, mydentalweek.com, and click on EB-5 and just copy the bank information, read everything, copy the bank information, how it, because international uh, investors, they know about how to send money uh, internationally. So there's yeah, my absolutely. speed code, everything is there. So I made it so easy because when I came here, I, I had to travel, run trips, Paris, Los Paris, Los Angeles, about eight times in less than a year because there were nothing. I have to fly here, look at stuff, look at this, go fly back to Paris because I have my, my children and they're going to school. Come back here. And now I made it so easy. The investor doesn't have to do all that. I found the EB-5 attorney, okay. the CPA, uh, who is used with foreign investors, EB-5 or E-2 visa. All my team, you know, it's a, a team of people who really, they have the skills of EB-5 and my company, you, the EB-5 investor doesn't even need to be here because in the price, the $1,800,000, I include everything, hiring the 10 employees, hiring a manager to manage the business here in the United States while the uh, EB-5 is still traveling, you see? I may think really, it's a real peace of mind, a uh, direct uh, EB-5 investor visa that I created, and it's available at mydentalweek.com. And what you've touched on, I'm just going to touch on one thing very, very important in any business is you're hand holding the people through every part of the process. And you said yourself, I'm making it easy, right? And this is where a lot of business owners don't understand. Unless you hand hold things through for people, right? People, you got to have, you know, in business, you need to have trust and you need to have communication, right? Do you agree with that? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 
but the, the, the next important fact is if you do not make it easy for people to understand your business and to get from A to B, to get from the inquiry to the sale as easy as possible, right? those people will never become your customer. Right? Right. And, right. and you, you've done it. You know, you've got it. Bang, you've, you've hit it. And, you've got, and what I love, I, can, I mean, people are going to be listening to this podcast and they can hear the passion in your voice. I wish they could see the video because like, your expression, the way you're using your hands, I, I know you're Italian, but you're using your hands and you're giving this whole, and you can just see the whole passion in you. And you, when you see that in a business owner, an entrepreneur, you know yeah. from that you know from that point, from that moment, that entrepreneur is not just passionate about it, but they believe and they know they can deliver the end product, right? Exactly, exactly. And, right. that, and well, I do the same with my basic product because it's not just I'm selling the EB-5. However, the bottom line of the product is the dental wig, you know? So it, and in the meantime, I create, I made things easy for people with missing teeth because I realized that, in fact, my mission here on this planet is to solve missing teeth on, on, uh, on, in the world. Why? Because I'm the dental manufacturer. So the, ba the fundamental of my business is making, uh, uh, replacing missing teeth. And I made it the same, very easy. So I created a system called Buy One, Smile Forever, which is a program, it's a membership where when people, they sign up for that membership, we will ship to them the electrical, electric uh, toothbrush, uh, mouthwash, uh, toothbrush is every three, every three months. We will go to the house and replace, take, get the impressions, go back to the lab, go back to the house, try out, go back to the lab, make the dental away, come back to the home, deliver it and adjust it if needed, go back. And if they need extra adjustment, they will just give a phone call. We will go back and adjust everything. So it includes the replacement of the missing teeth every three years. Because at the end of the day, when we start losing something, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. it's an it's an uh, unstoppable uh, process. And every month, we'll ship all this my care needs, like a mouthwash, um, flossing, toothbrush, toothpaste, all this shipped to them directly. We made things very easy, peace of mind. Always really delivering the more uh, uh, um, uh, 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 improvement, more values to people's life. And that has been the way I think. How can I improve people's life with my skills in the dental industry? Absolutely, and like I said, you're making it easy. I love the fact that you go to people's homes, and that you know, makes it even even better. But let me ask you uh, another question: What do you see as the your main challenge, or what do you see as the main challenge today in, in the marketplace? Well, you know, my company, my dental with, at my dental with com, I'm I would say the only dental tech in the market right now. Why? Because everything is set up through my Dental Week app. Right now, it's normally available on App Store and um, uh, Google Play. Why? Because I made things so that you just need to, you go on, install the app and everything works in, through the app. And this is about using uh, the, the technologies and that's a big change. And also having everything online. You know, because it's not like, oh, when I start doing this, people say, oh, this, she's crazy. How can you get your teeth online? <laughs> I said, it is. And I did it because when I moved, I moved from Paris to uh, Los Angeles, I had my store in downtown LA, you know, five minutes from uh, Los Angeles City Hall. And I was putting the, feeding, uh, paying back then like $2,000 per month minimum for my rent. And I said, well, Facebook doesn't have any store. Instagram right. doesn't have a store. Amazon doesn't. Mm. And why am I paying this? I need to think and set up my business, everything online. And today, this is it. Everything is online. So, and I made it so that just a little 10 by 10 facility will be able for the dental wig technologies to make the dental wig. And everything, oh, 
payment, all these handle. You know, look at like how Airbnb works. And I did it because I wanted to know how it works. I went and I, I became Uber driver for two weeks. <laughs> and okay. see how Uber Uber app works on the site as a driver because I was an Uber, I was a, a rider. And then I did the same with Lyft. And I did the same with Airbnb. You see, it's see, uh, being host and guest. I, said, I have to see how it works. And I, said right, yeah. my, and I said to my IT guy, this is what I, I want. Because back then, the app was on uh, App Store and Google Play. And, but just like, and he told me, what do you need? I said, I don't know exactly what I need. Let me figure out. Then I went out and did all this to say, see how it works. And today, everything is online. So the version, the upgraded version of my dentalwig.com app is coming up very soon. And it's going to be very, very easy. You know, you're booking your appointment, uh, uh, canceling every appointment, chatting with your dental wig technologist in your area, everything will be flowing. That's the challenge, being able to turn, to transform your company uh, completely digital. See what we're doing, you and myself are, are doing right now. It's, I mean, you are from your, uh, I believe your house, I'm from my house. That's it. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I'm in South Africa at the moment, and you're, you're in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and with this yeah. coronavirus, we are safe at home, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I said right at the beginning of this podcast, right, that you're an amazing woman, and I, I, I wasn't lying when I said that. And you just, like, ticked another box when you said that. You're like, oh, I need to know how Uber works. I need to know how the app works. Oh, I know. I've become an Uber driver. Uh, who would even think about doing something like that? That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, it was just, it, it was obvious that that was, and by the way, I'm yeah, very yeah. lucky, I mean, mm. not lucky, I made my choice to be in Los yeah. Angeles. I mean, I'm here in California with all these companies, so it's not by accident. I say, if the, these guys can do, achieve this type of result, I can do it. Because this field of California, it's what it is. It's, it's like, it's, it's, let's grow uh, imagination, invention. Mm. Whatever you want to realize, you, when you walk here outside, you can feel that power of get, 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 uh, giving you the opportunity to become what you want. And I selected Los Angeles instead of San Francisco because Los Angeles is where you have celebrities and what it's important too in our success it's not just about business i love the celebrities part also how to combine all this only in los angeles it can happen that's why i'm here and i love yeah to be here uh, and interesting enough i'm not going to go into this on my side of things but i'm glad you picked up on the celebrity thing because one of the things i teach people especially when we're doing the instagram things and the linkedin and that is to talk about the movers and shakers and celebrities and to say, I tell people, do you know, if you want to get like a celebrity involved with you, talk to them because they will talk back to you. And people don't, they, they seem to have this like taboo thing about speaking to celebrities. It's really strange. You know, and I've actually had conversations with, uh, I, I'm going to throw names here. I'm sorry. I'm going to throw names. I've actually had conversations with Mark Hamill, you know, who plays Luke Skywalker in, in Star Wars on, on, on Twitter, you know. And I just contacted him and just started talking to him. And he's very open about the conversation. So what you do with the celebrities is great. And I think that actually takes us into the next question I've got for you as well, which is this. Is, yeah. is, is, you, you know where I'm going to go with this one. HNW Galas. Tell me about that. Yeah, uh, the gala, it's uh, HNW, it's high net worth, and I is individual. So basically, yeah. the City Gala, I was asked last year to become a City Gala, City Summit ambassador. And when I look at uh, the profile of what that the guy did, and I find that it was on, only about celebrities, Los Angeles celebrity, American celebrities, uh, some other celebrities like uh, Sir Rick Branson, you know, 
So yeah. I look at those videos. You have Sir Rick Branson. You have uh, uh, Hal Berry, um, uh, Quincy Jones, uh, yeah. D.D., all these uh, plus billionaires like uh, Shaq Tang guy, Robert Harjavec, uh, I said billionaires like Paul Mitchell, you know, uh, the founder of Paul Mitchell, all this, I, John Travolta, you name them. And I said, well, I'm selling 85 investor visa, which is $1.8 million. This is my place where I have to be. And yeah. I was really uh, uh, blessed that the founder, uh, Ryan Long, asked to become a celeb um, a, uh, an ambassador, which I really accepted with all my honor. I was really honored. So we had that big event in February uh, eight, nine, 7, 8, 9, 2020, last, uh, last month. It was epic, epic. You know, we, and we have this gala in Hollywood and the guest, celebrity guest was uh, Demi Moore. So, and we, sure. the room wow. was filled with billionaires and you can feel it, you know, those, because uh, celebrities, they come, they show up with their uh, bodyguard, with all their protections. Uh, the, the room, the place where we had the event, we hold the event itself has its own protection. The, the uh, event organizer has its own protection. So you can, those billionaires, they have their own pro protection, their bodyguards. So and it's a room really filled with wealthy people and all entrepreneurs. And the purpose of this is to really like connect entrepreneurs, you know, together. And so the event happened on, end up on now uh, February 9th. So the week after that, as we start connecting for feedback, you know, and we plan to have our meeting to meet together to really talk about what happened to the event, you know, and what next. When suddenly we heard that the founder just got into a horrific car accident and he's in the coma. And that okay. was in February 17th. And... Yeah. Uh, his name Ryan Long, and we on Facebook, all social media platforms, we were sending prayers to him, you know, to 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 get out of this. And unfortunately, he passed away on March second. He was buried yesterday. I'm it's sure. It's heartbreaking for us. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we are like he's the founder. He's a guy in. Uh, all his career, he was just 41. It happened, the accident happened a uh, few, few days before his birthday. His birthday was February 26th. And we were planning to get another high network uh, party for his birthday, birthday in Beverly Hills. It didn't happen. So we are like orphans. Uh, Ryan Long was buried yesterday. And... But the CEO said that uh, we will um, uphold his legacy. Yeah. So we are waiting for what is going to be next. We don't know yet. It's what okay. it is. Okay. You got. I mean, that's. I'm sorry to hear that. That's uh, that's um, uh, such a shocker. Um, what do you consider to be, you know, some of your or your your key challenge around these galas? in yourself what do you think is the biggest challenge you come across i mean the challenge is always about making sure that your the people that you bring on the table uh they they get a uh, full satisfaction so basically as an ambassador you know i i was the eyes the ears and the mouth of siri summit siri gala and mostly siri i was really focusing on siri gala so i had contact people willing all over the world, India, oh. Europe, all this. And a lot of them, they couldn't uh, uh, show up because of either um, travel ban or uh, they didn't have enough time to get their U.S. visa. Some people, they got their appointment to get the U.S. for their uh, U.S. visa in their country on February 11th 
where well, the events were already over. So that was the big one of really the big challenge with all the regulatory aspect, you know, the travel ban and and uh, now we have the uh, uh, restriction, you know, with travel. And yeah. basically, I promised them that uh, I will do my best to get back to them by the end of this year, which is December, so that we can start the process uh, earlier uh, in order for them to get their U.S. visa so they can attend the event. Because the event normally was happening the night of the asker, which is, you know, it was already on the website, uh, City Gala 2021. The date was already there because it's the night of the asker. So I was planning all that, and suddenly, Ryan Law is not no longer here. It's so hard, yeah. so hard. Yeah. So how we deal with that? I posted yesterday, uh, even with the Corona virus uh, uh, here, you know, with the uh, the national emergency, I didn't attend the uh, the funeral, the funerals, because we have to avoid to be a lot of people in the same room. Can yeah. you imagine? Yeah. But uh, they basically, I think they are getting, there will, there will be a big uh, funeral when all these coronavirus will be uh, over because all these people living outside, like uh, Sir Rick Branson, I, 100%, he would like to be there because he's part of his team. He's part of those people who have, uh, who attended Ryan, Ryan uh, event. All these people, these celebrities, they are not. They don't even live in Los Angeles. Like uh, they live, like maybe in, uh, East Coast, and they travel. And now with uh, travel restriction, almost nothing was possible. Yeah, and this is part of challenges about businesses. I have people last night. A guy from India. He said, "Lady, how uh, can I do for EB5? Now I have a person who is ready." I said, oh. "Well." Uh, hope the great thing is that I did everything possible online, so at least he can start his process online. Right. It's, yeah. And everything. Why everything is going on? Because the government, if the work here, people are going to work. It's just that you need to be very, very careful. We, we. It's forbidden to be in a group of people. You see what I mean? So, yeah. And, uh, some people are working on uh, at home. And this coronavirus is making people think about making their business totally uh, remote, totally online, which is good. I mean, it's what it's my way to see this coronavirus, the challenge here for those who were not prepared, you know. Yeah, and, and the thing is, this coronavirus has hit so many businesses. I know the SMEs here in South Africa and in the UK. Uh, are really suffering at the moment because of it. But as you said, it's also an opportunity for businesses to think, how can I survive things like this in the future? And sometimes it takes something this big for a business to sit back and go, oh, okay, look, I wasn't expecting this, so what do I need to do? I know it's a bit of a knee-jerk reaction with some companies. And a lot of companies have already, you know, have already got that in place, like yourself. Um, and I was having this conversation uh, with uh, someone a couple of days ago, and they said, you know, Mark, you, you do a lot of your work online. And I said, that's, that's correct. And I said, do you never go see your customers? And I said, you know, I probably only see about 1% of my customers face-to-face, 1% -face, of my customers. And I'm not talking online, I'm talking physically face-to-face, -face, about 1%. I said, and if you actually look at my client base, uh, I said, you know, do you know, 60 to 70% of my client base, I've never ever met most clients. I talk to them, certainly, but I've never met them. And the reason is I don't need to, you know, <laughs> this is the thing. I have to ask you this question. I mean, you've been talking about celebrities and you dropped some names in there, which I was really pleased of. But I need to ask this question. Is there any person in particular in the world of celebrities that you would love to be at your gardens? Say, so, other person where? Uh, any is there, uh, is there, if you had one person, someone said, who would you love to have at your gods? Which celebrity in the world? Who would it be? Well, there are many people. You know, I told you that they are, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm a female, right? A mm. black female. And in this industry of looking good, because teeth, smart, is about how you're improving uh, your physical looking. I would love to have somebody like 
Rihanna as mm. one of my endorsement because I love what she does and she is very involved right now in Africa which for me means a lot you know even though I'm uh, I am international person but it means a lot to me I love uh, our former governor uh, Schwarzenegger yeah I, I, yes I know Schwarzenegger to represent uh, men male why because he's European he came here with nothing you know like Rihanna I love these people because they came here with nothing and today they are extremely successful these are people that I would love to have with them but it doesn't mean that I won't love having Quincy Jones or Oprah yeah. or you see what I mean the more you have it is the better it is right absolutely yeah yeah even Donald Trump, the President Trump, if I can have it as endorsement or his wife or uh, former President Barack Obama it, or oh, wow. his yeah. wife, uh, Michelle, it's all about those people who created values to others. I'm, I'm there for, if they can help me, uh, we can do this. Help me, you know, help me help other people. Oh my gosh, I will say, mm -hmm. come and get it. <laughs> I'll say thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so there's some names that's been dropped there. Anyone who's listening into this podcast, uh, I'm sure if anyone's got any contacts there, I'm going to put them your way. And who knows? Who knows what comes from you? Never. My father always said to me, "You, you don't get unless you ask." Okay, eh? you never get unless you ask. Let me ask you these a couple more questions for you. Um, what or who is your ideal referral? I do with ideal referral. Oh, I mean, referral is a little bit tricky. Yeah. Because you really need to make sure you know both sides, right? Yes. The person you are, you want to refer and the person you are referring to. Making Correct. Making yeah. sure that they nobody is going to come here and burn all the work you did. I did. So I'm very picky about referral because I want first to understand what do you need and know who you are, how, because some people, I mean, they, they, they are great in sabotaging their own life. You see what I mean? Right. You, yeah, will yeah. Build, uh, you will build a strong bridge between you and somebody. And when it's time to refer, that person will come and just burn the bridge. So I'm very, very picky. I always say, tell me what you need first. And based on your need and who you are, I will let you know if I can or I cannot. If I, I, I will tell you, you know what, I can't do it because of A, B, C, D. Period. Yeah. And if I can do it, I'll find somebody that I know can help. I'll do it. I can bridge. But in order, I even make people uh, get married. Yeah, because I, I know I knew those two people and I put them together and uh, it's over 30 years now and the marriage is still going on. It's about really knowing both sides. I just can't pull and just say, oh, this is the name. No, because it's about trust about how people handle uh, uh, adversity. You don't want somebody who's going to come and, ah, and cry all the time to the, your person because maybe it's not what they're looking for. Does that make sense? Absolutely, yeah. So last two questions I've got for you. Um, one, I always ask people because I feel that we, we touched on the online stuff earlier on. How important has social media been in your business how is it um, we know how it's played but how important is it for you oh yeah it is you know uh right now besides the eb5 investor visa i'm raising i'm on the uh, a uh, uh, a seed round of seeking five million dollars to really uh bring my business to the next level what happened was that we did advertising on social media especially uh facebook Oh my gosh, we have, <laughs> we have a thousand of people asking nationwide, Lady, when are you coming in my zip code? And they just, uh, we were asking, what's your zip code? This is on messenger. 
this is my zip code. We have thousands of people. So we just we pause everything because I couldn't uh, deliver. And this is something crucial in the business. Instead of trying to deliver your cost, serve your customer halfway, just pause and go find money so you can really make their life easy. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Social media is crucial when you really know how you target your customers. I'm a little bit lucky because, lucky because my business, my main business of missing teeth is for people from 18 to 220. You see what I mean? <laughs> you are, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> now, in America, we have 178 million people missing at least one tooth. And okay. The people have two jaws. So the, the, the market is there and all of them, they are on social media. And even for with the elderly people who are not on social media, their children are. We often received phone calls from lawyers say, oh, lady, can you help my mom? She's in a, 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 a assisting living home in 20 miles from here. You see things like that. Yeah. yeah, and this this is the power of social media. Oh, it's obviously a big, a great tool, a great tool to advertise. Absolutely. So what what I'm going to do in the podcast and the links, I will put in your LinkedIn account, your websites, uh, you're on Instagram. I notice as well, and I know you're on Facebook. So I've got all your links. So I will be putting them all out for you. Okay, and I'll be pushing them. My last question for you, very quickly, is this: What is your key to success? My key to success, two things. First thing, improve customer's experience. Make, wow. yeah. make customer's life easy because there are already so many problems in the planet. If you can't solve this, second, don't give up. Don't give up. It's Excellent. that simple. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Liddy, you're the most amazing woman. And I say it again and again and again. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, my darling. It really has. Hopefully we can do more. Is there anything else you want to finish off with before we finish? Yes, my, I have one question for you. you can, okay. Oh, okay. Fine. Quick, Go on. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, you are in South Africa. If you can find a way to get for me to get 60 seconds on a national TV, you know, any of you, live, please, I will appreciate it. Because what I'm doing is great. You know, people need, people want to come in America and live that American dream. People want to do things. One minute of any of you in the national TV in South Africa, I will love it. Okay, I, I see what I can do. And as soon as I get something, I will definitely pass it over to you. Okay, sounds good. And for everybody, thank you so much for listening or watching. Uh, you have all my contact on LinkedIn, Lady Lavolsi on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. Follow me, send me a message. I will be more than happy to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lady. And thank you, Mark. From